Hello guys and welcome to my video about Pickford playing for England's number one. Before we get the video underway, as you can see, I'm wearing the England's away shirt. This is the one we wore against Colombia actually in the World Cup in 2018 and hopefully in the future be a very nice classic. Now, going back to Pickford, he was also in the 2018 World Cup and that's where he started with his England career and he won many hearts across the nation, especially against Colombia. But sadly for him, his form has plummeted since lockdown and on the other hand, when you see Dean Henderson and Nick Pope, their form has definitely increased. Increased. In fairness, obviously, me being, as you can see, a Sheffield United fan, I've watched Dean Henderson closely after lockdown and his form probably hasn't been the best. You know, I think a lot of doubts about his career sort of maybe put him off a bit in terms of how he's playing. But the praise was still there, in fairness, unlike with Pickford. And for Pope, his form definitely picked up and a lot of praise was given to him, especially after that 1-1 draw at Anfield with Burnley last season. However, when you take those factors combined into consideration, it does make you think, why wasn't Nick Pope especially or even Dean Henderson given a chance especially since we've had friendlies they don't really mean anything it's more about Jennings the squad and seeing your options and it'd be interesting to see what they could have done for us Southgate is quite firm and doesn't like to change much as we can see with Grealish as well so it's probably why it hasn't changed I think in fairness to Pickford he's been a great keeper in the past that's why Everton brought him in for 30 million which was a lot of money at the time and just like Ramsdale with us there's a good keeper in there somewhere, but he's just not at that level at the moment. Down to confidence mainly, I can imagine. And that's why I thought, in fairness to him as well, that in the 2021 20, season, he'd probably find his feet again and, and he'd reach some new level of form. But as we know now, that's definitely not been the case and he's got even worse. I know he hasn't made mistakes every single game consistently, but I think when you look at the level he's meant to be playing on, you know, the wage he's been given, the price tag he's had, which I know are players they don't control, but nonetheless, you've got an obligation to fulfill. I think he hasn't reached those heights, so the criticism is probably fair. His form has been poor this season, and ironically, after four games of having poor form, his team managed to win all four games and be top of the league. Now, they've dipped slightly since, and they've reached seventh in the table, which if they were finished there at the end of the season, that'd be the highest finish since the 2016-17 season. Interestingly, was Lukaku's last season at the club. Now, sadly for Pickford, the negativity doesn't end there. He's also had a headline very strongly the last month about Van Dyke, where he went into a challenge with him, and it wasn't intentional, but it's a very rash and ill time challenge and both his legs went in between Van Dyke's and it seems as if Van Dyke from that challenge is going to be out for the season which as you can imagine for Liverpool fans is very infuriating a player which is pivotal to a lot of their clean sheets and lack of goals conceded is now going to be out for a large part of their season at the very least and it's going to definitely affect them on and even off the pitch. Now, to me, that was worse for him. He was in the defeat against Southampton, which was their first of the season. And after that, he was dropped against Newcastle. Lucky for him, though, it didn't make too much of a difference because they lost 2-1 against Newcastle anyway. And after that match, he was in the team against Man U. Now, against Man U, he couldn't really have done too much for the goals, in my opinion. But he did make a rash challenge once again against Maguire. I think you could argue in the build-up, he was fouled, so it wouldn't have been given. But nonetheless, it was a sort of a question in most people's heads, why would you do that? It was just very rash and pointless. Like I mentioned though, he wasn't penalised for it, so he was lucky, just like he was with the Van Dyke challenge. Now the question bears asking, especially now that we're going to a break where there's friendlies, not competitive matches, should he be playing? I think he shouldn't. Now going back to Nick Pope and Dean Henderson, since the new season, they haven't had the best of starts either. For Dean Henderson, as I very well know, he hasn't been playing for us this season and we've very much missed him especially with communication. Now, he's taken a risk in playing for my United team, which I can imagine the negotiations were. He'd be playing if De Gea had a poor form and poor start, which he probably did, but he managed to pick himself up a bit. In fairness, he hasn't done too much wrong in recent games, so you can't blame too much for how they've done this season. But nonetheless, Henderson has still managed to get League Cup games where he's done very well. I saw him make a good save against Luton. Obviously, not going to win him a start in the Premier League, but it's going to help him nonetheless. And he did play in his Champions League and makes Champions League debut against Istanbul back this year. But they, as we well know, no, they lost that game where they had that defensive masterclass from a corner. As for Nick Pope, he did keep a clean sheet against Brighton on Friday, but it doesn't tell the story for his whole team this season. The only team to be below in the league is, once again, my team, and we've been very shocking, so it's not much of a compliment to them. So he hasn't had the best of seasons so far, but I don't think that's really down to him. So I think with those two factors combined, Pickford can once again count himself a lucky that he's managed to sway his way still into the England team. But like I mentioned, Southgate seems like a person who doesn't really like to change too much, which I think is probably a bad thing, especially internationals, because form and injuries can happen a lot, so it's nice to even even if you've got an amazing team to alternate so you know your solutions if say in a big tournament someone gets injured or suspended so you know who can fill the void nicely but as it stands Pickford's our number one and it's a player who can't even be guaranteed number one spot his own team which is due to the fact that Rob Olsen is joined from Roma on loan who himself is also an international number one with Sweden and has had a brief spell of Champions League football with Roma as well he hasn't been the best of keepers he was at Cagliari last season on loan from Roma so now on Friday we have a friendly against Republic of Ireland this would be a great chance to try some new things outfield 
midfield and especially in goal like I mentioned in this video. I would personally like to see Nick Pope play because I don't really think at this rate Dean Henderson will be played for the Euros. It's a big call from Southgate to make to play a keeper in goal who's not even playing as a regular first team player for his own team. Granted it's for Man United who are a massive team. Nonetheless I don't think it's ideal to have a player in a, such a pivotal position not even playing regular football. So Nick Pope he's done decent this season. Like I mentioned they haven't done great as a team but he's kept quite a few clean sheets and as we know Burnley are very good defensively so he's quite switched on in terms of communicating with his defenders and I think he'd be a very solid choice you know he's not well class at least not yet but I do think he's very solid and might be enough for what England need when you look at Dean Henderson he's a very young lad so I think for the future this could be our future number one so maybe if appearance here and there but I think once he gets regular football that's more ideal situations to look at someone else deserves a chance otherwise when will they be given it under Southgate by the looks of it so to finish on my opinion is that Nick Pope needs to be the number one for the Euros and building up to it and probably have Pickford as number two in fairness because he's been given regular football and Henderson is number three. That's who he does well enough. I do one outfield with Grealish as well and why I think Southgate's not picking him and why he should. Now, if you did enjoy this video, please subscribe. It means so much to me. Until next time, guys, take it easy. All the best.